Before I read our next scripture lesson, um, I am grateful to be back. I am so glad to be back with you. I was gone for a month. We took a trip to the national parks out west, and I'm grateful to be back here with you. I do have to tell you, the first day I came back was Tuesday, and we've got the foundation who's working on the tower with this enormous boom, and then we've got... um, the trustees working really hard, and there's folks replacing the windows in Emerson Hall, and they're not just replacing them, they're like shattering them with just exploding everywhere. And right before I left, we had told Swedish American that they could use our building for a commercial. And we just thought they'd come, like take a little bit of footage and go. Oh, no, no, I was in the hair and makeup trailer, and then there was this huge camera, and I was standing in the sun, and there um, a few others with me, and they're like, the talent is standing in the sun, please hurry up. She comes over and like dabs the sweat off my face. It was hilarious. So you may or may not see our church in a, th- in a 30 second commercial, it will be the blip. It's, it might air in December. And also, I was gone so long that I got shut out of my computer, so I'll be preaching from my uh, laptop today. Our, we are turning now to a series on the Psalms. Psalm 113 will bless us this morning. Let these words of the Lord roll over you today. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above the nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God who is seated on high, who looks far down on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and he lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you that you are so good to us, that you bring us here today, that you love us, that you care for us, that you look for us, and I pray, O Lord, in this time and always, that our hearts would be open to your holy word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So we did just get back from the most amazing trip out west. We were at 10 national parks and monuments. The Badlands, Wind Cave, Mount Rushmore, Crazy Horse, Devil Tower, Grand Teton, Yellowstone Glacier, Waterton. And if I'm honest, I hadn't even heard of most of those a few months ago. But there are so many fun stories to tell. We spent the most time in Glacier National Park in Montana, right on the Canadian border. I'll tell you another time about how we had to buy a lot of fleece and a few new sleeping bags to stay warm in the unseasonably cold weather. But Glacier National Park was formed thousands and of whatever the scientists say years ago by glaciers of which few are still there. The weather patterns from the Pacific Northwest, Northwest send rain to the west side of the park. So soaking wet after two days of tent camping in the rain, we couldn't wait to get to the east. The road across the park is aptly named Going to the Sun Road, and wow was it ever. Leaving the Pacific Northwest rain as we approached the mountains and began to climb, the clouds started to open up and the sun poured through. We drove through valleys that had been cut by rushing creeks. We hugged the car around huge stone rocks that had those caution falling rock signs as if we would live to tell the story if the boulder fell. And we, as we reached the top of the climb, there were waterfalls cascading down snow-capped mountains, not in the distance, but right there, touchable, to be able to get out of the car and feel. We arrived on the other side of the park, then, and the next day took a short walk to the lake, surrounded by mountains formed by glaciers. It was the way I imagined Switzerland, not anything in the U.S., There, standing on the little rounded and smooth pebbles of the shore, as the crystal clear lake played tag with the sun and reflected the peaks, there with the lake lapping at my toes, there 
It was easy to sense the presence of the Lord. The right thing to do was to be quiet, to listen, to soak in the experience and revel in the grandeur of God. It was as if I could have whispered and the Lord would have been able to return in the same small tone. Standing on the floor of heaven, there is no need to wait for an echo. Tangible experiences of God are so important and we really certainly do not need to go to the top of a literal mountain to have a mountain top experience. God can and does come face to face with us in our daily lives in unremarkable and surprising ways. Ellen Davis, who wrote Getting Involved with God, Rediscovering the Old Testament, says the Psalms are designed to bring us to that place, to bring us to God. She says the Psalms are the only part of the Bible that has ready-made prayers. Most of the rest of the Bible, not all, is God's word to us. The Psalms are, Davis says, God's word in us. God's word in us. The Psalms are God's word in us. Ready made prayers for us to use and to be formed by. And I don't know how much you know about the Psalms, but they're not all nice, pretty praise and worship songs. There's anger and anxiety and depression and rage, not so that we get stuck in those states of being, but so that we can be completely honest with God. Davis says the Psalms are a kind of First Amendment, a freedom of speech for the faithful, where we can speak our minds openly and honestly before the Lord. Psalm 113 is one of praise, the place where the most faithful say to begin as we become before God, the one who made us and calls us by name. Psalm 113 says, praise the Lord, praise, O servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. It's important that we come before God exactly as we are with real words, with no pretense and without the fake falsities that can cause us to be religious people instead of those in a relationship with a living, loving God. And if we take these words and blindly recite them, then they are empty and meaningless to us. But the Psalms have a great way with their poetry and parallels of slowing us down and jolting us out of a rut. Praise the Lord, if that didn't sink in the first time. Praise, O servants of the Lord. And if our hearts were somewhere else, God's words beckon us back again. Praise the name of the Lord. The next lines are more of the same, begging us to focus on the name of the Lord, the power of God, the goodness, stillness, peace, love, and joy that dwells in each one of us. As we focus on these words, our lives melt into the one who calls us and we are formed into new beings who love and follow God, who is good and holy and just. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore, from the rising of the sun to its setting. The Lord is high above all nations and God's glory above all the heavens. God is high above. God is all-knowing, all-powerful, all-justice, all-compassionate, all-everything. And that can remind us of how small we are. Ten miles down a dirt road, we pulled into a recreation area in the middle of Montana. And I might have guessed of the free-roaming people of Man- Montana that this is, was a put-up-your-tent-anywhere-you-might-like-to-put-up-your-tent kind of place. And this particular recreation area was a graveled lot that plunged into a beautiful lake, a fisherman's paradise. We were in the middle of somewhere, but that somewhere had very little civilization and definitely no cell service reception. We arrived as the sun was about to set to put our tent among the RVs when a fisherman pulled his boat out of the lake and said to the locals next to us, did you hear about that tornado watch? I butted myself right into that conversation. Excuse me, did you say tornado? He sure did. 
With no cell phone, we could not confirm this news, but we thought better of staying on that little piece of land jutting out into the water to see whether or not the massive storm that was coming might produce a tornado. So we put our unopened tent back in the car and started to drive. But we'd already driven out all of the daylight hours, and without cell phones, we had no idea which of the next little city dots on the map would have a motel for us to weather out the storm. And it got dark, like the city dark that I'm kind of used to. And then it got country dark. And this Philly girl was already afraid of that. And then it got Montana dark. <laughs> the speed limits reduce at night there. It is that dark. And it was cloudy, and there was no moon, and there was no stars. And Montana claims to be big sky country. And being from central Illinois, where the cornfields extend to the horizon during the day, I might beg to differ. But at night, they totally win. It was so dark, it felt like at any minute we might get swallowed up by that big sky, or maybe we already had. Are we still driving on the road, or did we veer off? Just keep driving. We drove for three hours before we found a city with some streetlights and a motel. In those moments, I felt small, not in relation to a great big God, but small as if I was opinion in, opinion in this big world who could get swept off the face of the earth by the great monster of nighttime and no one would know. Circumstances of our lives can make us feel like this as well. We can get shunned or pushed out or pushed around or hurt and broken and we can feel like our lives do not have meaning or purpose. But Psalm 113 begs to differ. It continues, The Lord raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with princes of his people. And God gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. God turns the world upside down. Those are the lowliest of the lowliest in the Hebrew society. Being poor and having to sit on an ash heap is like the poorest level of poor you can be. And a barren woman would have no place to live. And God fixes all of that right up. Basically saying, whoever you are and whatever situation you have weighing heavy on your heart, God can and will flip it on its head. The religious leaders of Jesus' day knew about this knew this quality of God, knew that God would take what was under and make it above, but Jesus pressed it farther than they wanted to go. Jesus was giving a radical welcome to sinners and tax collectors and people who didn't even fit into the religious way of doing things, people who didn't even know how to follow along in a bulletin, and people who came from the other side of the known world, foreigners who needed things and didn't even speak the right languages. So Jesus told them a story in the Gospel of Luke. Oh, what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, or search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I have lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. There is no reference to the, the nine coins who have not been lost, only the one who is lost. And I want us today to avoid thinking that the lost people are out there or over there or far away. They are, and that is true, and we should remember that they too are welcomed and loved by a God who knows no borders and boundaries with his love. But today, remember that at times, on and off, day to day, season to season, sometimes minute to minute, we are the ones who are lost. And God pursues us. God looks for you and for me until we are found. And unlike the lost sheep in the story before this one, there is nothing a coin can do. The coin is not passive or active. The coin is just simply lost. The reason is not necessary and the excuses don't matter. What is lost must be found because what is lost is precious. 
You are precious before the Lord, and when you stray, turn down the wrong path, look for life around a confusing corner, God will come looking for you. And if you want to be, you will be found and enter into the faithful embrace of the one who made you, loves you, and calls you by name. Today, let us, let us remember to let the Psalms lead us to the Lord. Let us use the word of God in us to guide us so that we can be found, forgiven, loved, made whole, and put at peace. Alleluia. Amen.